so hello guys let us dive into the new topic that is microscopy it is a small topic so i am following aburba shastri ma'am's textbook so basically i am taking images from those textbook okay so there are two five types of microscopy totally bright field dark field contrast phase microscopy fluorescent microscopy and electron microscopy now so the first two is bright field microscopy and dark field microscopy so bright field microscopy is our normal regular microscopy we seen in lab so it is also known as light microscopy or also known as compound microscopy okay the source used used in bright field microscopy is a regular light that is our normal sunlight or tube light okay here also normal regular light and the dye used is the staining method here is acidic or basic like aniline dyes or basic dyes like safranin etc okay safranin crystal violet like in gram positive negative so here the staining is here no staining important in dark field method no staining is used at all so it is an important we will be dealing about it later so in dark field there is no staining so what is the mechanism behind dark field and bright field microscopy let us dive into that so uh, here in bright field microscopy we already know the mechanism there will be a light source there will be a condenser which condenses the light towards the stage where the specimen is kept the specimen get refracted the light into uh, objective and uh, ocular lens that means eyepiece which get focused as an uh, magnified images so we will be getting a magnified image okay so here the uh, staining is needed but here no staining is required in dark field microscopy same as that of uh, bright field microscopy where the difference is that in the condenser okay so what is here is that there will be a light source like a normal tube light and there will be an opaque central disk in the condenser so you see there in the condenser there will be a opaque disk first of all like a bright field microscopy to get uh, the condenser get uh, condensed to the light towards the specimen which get focused on the eyepiece as an magnified image so here the thing is that in due to this opaque disk we will be getting a dark background with the organism as bright you see we will be getting a bright organism a bright uh, microorganisms in a dark background so this is an example how the Stay, uh, how the field will be looking like this is a borella uh, uh, spiral bacteria you see it have a dark background and bright organism as in here we know gram staining in bright field there will be a gram positive cocci which is violet in color here we use a crystal violet too. violet as the primary stain and the secondary stain get stained in the negative basically there are safranin these are the dyes okay in gram positive crystal violet negative bacillus safranin get accumulated as a secondary staining we will be detailing uh, study about the staining method so we will be discussed there so this is how the bright field look like how the dark field look like okay so the next th third microscopy method is the phase contrast method so in phase contrast method firstly let us discuss about the source here the source is normal light that is our regular sunlight or uh, tube light okay but the staining like a dark field microscopy in phase contrast microscopy there is no staining no staining is required so in phase contrast and dark microscope dark field microscopy there is no staining is used so it has its own advantage advantage we will be discussing about that and now we will let us dive into the mechanism okay so there will be a light source here which emits the normal light and there will be a condenser and like dark field microscopy the condenser is a special condenser with the central opaque disk okay like a dark field microscopy 
there will be a central opaque disc and this condenser get light contents towards the stage where the specimen is kept this is the specimen on stage so this condenser get condenser the light towards the specimen from the stage the light will emits into what our objective and there is eyepiece so the difference in between the dark field microscopy and phase contrast microscopy is that there will be a phase plate this is called phase plate phase plate between the objective and eyepiece so what the phase plate do is that phase plate get absorb the light from the objective and convert convert the density and the refractive index of organism into what different intensity of light so you see what happen is that there will be what organism will be darker in color and the background background will be light in color okay so this is what going to happen will be like organism will be dark in color you see this is how the phase contrast microscopy will look like so from the uh, specimen when the uh, light passes through the phase plate it will convert the density and the refractive index of this organisms into different density of life so that's why the background will color less in the lighter and the organism will be colored as darker in color this is the mycobacterium tuberculosis okay mycobacterium tb bacillus on this these are the mycobacterium tb bacillus there will be contrast in color similar to dark field microscopy but in dark field microscopy organism will be lighter background will be darker here the background is uh, lighter organism is darker so this is the phase contrast microscopy then the fourth microscopy is fluorescent microscopy in fluorescent microscopy our source is uv light usually we uses what mercury bulb okay mercury lamp is used as a uv uv light source and the staining here done is fluorescent staining fluorescent staining is used for example acridine dye this acridine dye is acidic okay so the staining method usually here is fluorescent staining now let us dive into the mechanism of fluorescent microscope so in fluorescent microscopy there will be a light emitting source usually it is mercury bulb okay it will uh, emit light and uh, what excitation filter there will be an excitation filter what excitation filter do is that it will block all high wavelength sorry this is frequency all high wavelength light okay block all the high wavelength light and emit short wavelength light that is our uv so it will allow only the passage of uv light through the emission filter from the emission filter the uv light get reflected by dichromatic mirror okay so what happens is that the uv light get reflected from dichromatic mirror and this uv light get absorbed by the specimen here the specimen is dyed with a fluorescent dye so this fluorescent dye absorb almost some of the uv light and rest it will emit through the objective rest of the light is emitted through the objective and in between the objective and eyepiece in between the objective and eyepiece there is a barrier filter so what this barrier filter will do is that it will absorb rust all uv light okay so barrier filter do what is that it will absorb the rust of the uv light which is not absorbed by the specimen why to protect our eyes you see uv light for our eye is damage okay so uh, the rest of the uv light get absorbed by the barrier filter and through the eyepiece we can see yes 
image like this you see these are the fluorescent dyed organism in dark background this is how the fluorescent microscope work okay there will be a mercury bulb there will be an excitation filter which blocks the uv and which blocks the other all light and uh, emit the uv only and the uh, dichromic mirror will reflect the uv towards the specimen and the specimen absorb the uv light due to uh, fluorescent dye and the rest of the uh, uv light is uh, uh, absorbed by the barrier filters in order to protect our eye and we will be getting an image like this now let us dive into the last and final microscopy that is electron microscopy you already know electron microscopy it has a high resolution among all microscopy so the source here will be electron source will be an electron gun there will be an electron gun sorry source is electron gun and our dye is our staining method the stain we used is heavy metal okay heavy metal for example lead lead is the stain we used here so how the mechanism is here that there will be an electron gun electron gun emits electrons and this condenser lens magnet get condensed the electrons towards the specimen the specimen is uh, kept on a copper plate okay this is a copper plate so what then happen is that this objective lens and the projector lens these all are magnetic so you see objective and eyepiece here are magnets okay so this objective lens magnet and projector lens magnet what happens is that they focus the electrons towards the photographic film okay here photographic film is made uh, kept hand in the photographic film we get enlarged image so what happens is a specimen get scattered the electrons according to their uh, image so we'll be getting a enlarged photographic film of that particular specimen so here the thing is that the condenser objective and eyepiece used are magnets and the light source is electron and the final image is get on a photographic film so these are the five electron uh, and these are the five microscopic technique used in microbiology and the next thing is that there is benefit there is some benefit of our dark field microscopy and phase contrast microscopy the benefit is that there is no staining is used either in dark field or in phase contrast so what are all the benefit of dark field and phase contrast contrast microscopy so you see there is no staining first one no staining so what is that thing here means is that staining kills the organism right the internal structures get destroyed by the staining due to accumulation of its particles so no staining means we get we get to see live organism you see that is the second advantages we get to see live organism so we can see live organism so there will be we can uh, we can demonstrate the mortality of organism since it was live we can demonstrate the mortality of organisms and also in dark field and phase contrast uh, microscopy we can demonstrate thin organism very easily see there is no staining so uh, we can uh, demonstrate live organism and we can also demonstrate the mortality of organism since it was alive and we can also demonstrate thin organisms easily in bright field and uh, dark field and phase contrasting microscope okay so this is all about microscopy let us see in the next chapter